Hi, this is Talon Jane. This is FTE 211 Advanced Armors 1911 course. This is the week one assignment. Uh, for this assignment, we have to give you two facts about the 1911 that weren't in this week's curriculum, as well as discuss the military's decision to switch back from the 45 caliber to the 9 millimeter and the rationale behind that. Fact number one. The inventor of the 1911, John Moses Browning, had a patent that was uh, unique, not to the 1911, but was unique to his firearms, is a tilted barrel design that happens when you slide the slide to the rear. Um, it's harder to notice on this 1911, however, there is a slight upward angle to the barrel. Um, this is now a design that you'll see in almost all semi-automatic pistols. Uh, an extreme example of that is my wife has a nine millimeter M and P shield. And you can see when it's back, how far up the angle of the barrel is. Why this is relevant is um, because of the influence that it's had on not just uh, future models of the 1911, but on all semi-automatic pistols up to this point. Fact number two, there are three different conditions that people consider carrying a 1911. Condition number three is carrying the 1911 and I'm gonna demonstrate right here, carrying the 1911 with the chamber empty, the hammer down, and the uh, full magazine inserted into the firearm. Condition number two is with the uh, magazine inserted, a round chambered, and the hammer down. Um, some people think this method is safest. However, this involves having to drop the hammer on a loaded chamber. Uh, and there's been numerous accidents where dropping the hammer has caused the firearm to go off. Condition number one is similar to condition number two, but with the hammer to the rear and the safety on, the thumb safety. Uh, this is, was the design of John Moses Browning. So if you, if you go back and, and read you know, the patents, it was designed to be carried with a round chamber, the hammer to the rear and the safety on. For part two, we're asked to discuss the military's decision to change from the 45 caliber to the nine millimeter. This isn't necessarily a reversion as the caliber that came before the 45 caliber was a 38 caliber. In John Moses Browning's biography, I believe the biography was called The Guns of John Moses Browning, The Remarkable Story of the Inventor Whose Firearms Changed the World. Uh, chapter 9, it discussed the uh, story where Major Robert Lee Bur Ballard went and had an encounter where he was fighting the Moro tribesmen of uh, the Philippines, and he asked the army to uh, look at giving him a caliber that's actually got some stopping power, and that's where we moved to the 45. If you look at a video by uh, Garen Thumb, which I'll, I'll tag below, uh, he directly compares the 45 caliber and the 9 millimeter uh, really well. I think it's one of the best videos on YouTube that you can see right now to compare those two calibers. He comes up with the conclusion that really stopping power and penetration and all of that, there's very little difference between the 9 millimeter and the 45. The 9 millimeter, uh, you have a drastically increased capacity. You can have two firearms that are the exact same size, and with a 9 millimeter, you can carry more rounds. Quickly discussing my references for this video, which I'll also link down below. The Garen Thumbs YouTube channel, the video is called 9 millimeter versus 45 ACP. We end the debate, the human torso test, uh, the conditions of readiness for the 1911 pistol. It's an article written by Jim Wilson, and it was posted on March 26, 2015. Thanks.